The Book of Proverbs, Chapter 20 Proverbs 20 verses 1 to 30 Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion, whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, therefore, shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find? The just man walketh in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? Divers waits, and divers measures, both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure, and whether it be right. The hearing ear, and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. It is not, it is not, saith the buyer, but when he is gone his way, then he boasteth. There is gold, and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice make war. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets, therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Whoso curseth his father, or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Divers weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Man's goings are of the Lord, how can a man then understand his own way? It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make inquiry. A wise king scattereth the wicked, and bringeth the wheel over them. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. The blueness of a wound clean saith away evil, so, do stripes the inward parts of the belly. Opening sentence. Proverbs 20 verse 1 Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Finding the theme, be chastised or be deceived. This chapter begins with the deception of wine and strong drink, which represents false doctrine, and it ends with the cleansing of the inner man by chastening, which represents good doctrine. It is the king's duty to judge and punish evildoers as a representative of the God he serves. His subjects can choose to allow the chastisement to do its cleansing work, or they may continue to be deceived by false doctrine and live a life of sin. Drunkenness is a type of sin that typifies forgetting God's word, being overcome by the devil's seduction, and staggering forward into trouble as a man walks in opposition to God's word. The law of Moses prohibited a ruler of the people to drink wine or strong drink while holding office because he might forget the law and pervert judgment. Drunkenness is self-deception. Leviticus 10 verse 9, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou, nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Proverbs 31 verses 4 to 5 It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink, and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Wine also represents the false doctrine of the strange woman who seduced unbelieving Isael into worshipping Satan through her pagan idolatry. Deuteronomy 32 verse 33 Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Revelation 14 verse 8 And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The fear of a king. Proverbs 20 verses 2 to 3 The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion, whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. God chose to set the king as a righteous judge over his people Israel. They were expected to fear the king, just as they were to fear the Lord. This healthy reverence would bring blessing upon the nation and keep them safe. Only a fool would continue to meddle with strife and provoke the king to anger. Proverbs 24 verse 21 My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Natural Consequences Proverbs 20 verse 4 The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, therefore, shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. 
A sluggard thinks in his heart that he can refuse to work and still get food by begging, but he has deceived himself. The natural consequence of his inaction is the self-imposed chastisement of starvation. The search for a faithful man. Proverbs 20 verses 5 to 6, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find? Counsel is the thoughts that reside in a man's heart. When the king is searching out a matter, it is his duty to draw out the truth. Most men are deceived into thinking they are right and good. When the scripture asks the question, who can find a faithful man? The correct answer is, no one. Every man's heart is deceived and wicked. The fear of the Lord and perfect obedience to his word are the requirements of a faithful man. Only the Lord Jesus Christ is such a man. Jeremiah 17 verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? Integrity versus evil. Proverbs 20 verses 7 to 8, The just man walketh in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. The natural consequence of walking in integrity is living a blessed life. A wise king could discern between a just man who spoke the truth and a deceived man who proclaimed to be righteous. The king had authority from God's word to punish the evildoer, which included sentencing him to death. A clean heart. Proverbs 20 verses 9 to 11, who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin. Divers waits and divers measures, both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure, and whether it be right. There is not a faithful man on earth, and no one can claim to have a clean heart that is pure from sin. To make such a claim would be deception, just as diverse weight and measures are a deception. The heart of a child, who has no knowledge of good and evil, Deuteronomy 1 verse 39, can be judged by his actions, most of which are foolish. Proverbs 22 verse 15 Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Spiritual understanding. Proverbs 20 verse 12 The hearing ear, and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. Jesus stated on numerous occasions, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Everyone in the kingdom had physical ears, but they had to choose to believe the words of God in order to have understanding. The free will of the king. Proverbs 20 verse 13, Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Verse 13 has an implied subject of you, which is addressed to the reigning king. One of the choices the king must make and teach by example is to be spiritually awake. The king can choose to sleep instead of work, but the natural consequence would be physical poverty. The king can choose to ignore God's counsel and the natural consequence would be spiritual poverty. The satisfying bread is the word of God, the deceived buyer. Proverbs 20 verses 14 to 15, it is not, it is not, saith the buyer, but when he is gone his way, then he boasteth. There is gold, and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. The particular buyer thinks he is deceiving the seller. When he makes his purchase, he claims that the item being sold is worth nothing. As soon as he makes his purchase, he boasts of the value of what he has bought. The buyer is deceived because he does not understand the fear of the Lord. He does not know that truth is far more valuable than golden rubies. The strange woman's bread. Proverbs 20 verses 16 to 17, take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. In the law of Moses, it was prohibited for a ruler to keep the garment of a man as a pledge. Exodus 22 verse 26, If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the sun goeth down. In this Proverbs, God instructed the king to make an exception, to take the garment instead of returning it, for the man who has pledged his garment for a strange woman. A strange woman is a harlot. See Judges 11 verses 1 to 2. This man is yet another deceived buyer. He has bought into the lie, the bread of deceit, which the strange woman is selling. The strange woman is covered in detail in Proverbs 2 verses 16 to 19, 5 colon 3 dash 6, 17 to 20, 6 colon 20 dash 26, and 7 colon 5 dash 27. In this particular case, the king issued punishment upon the evildoer, and the man would also suffer the natural consequences of ignoring God's instructions. Good counsel versus the deception of flattery. Proverbs 20 verses 18 to 19 Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets, 
Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. God's counsel is always good advice. His word was available to the king and to the nation of Israel through the law of Moses. A talebearer is a deceiver. Flattery is one type of deception used to seduce believers away from the truth. God warned the king and his counselors to beware of flatterers among them who speak appealing lies. Psalm 55 verse 21 The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil yet were they drawn swords. The deceived son. Proverbs 20 verses 20 to 21, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. The wicked son gladly receives the physical inheritance which his father and mother give him, but he rejects the spiritual wisdom given in the law of God. The son who curses will be cursed. Exodus 21 verse 17, And he that curseth his father, or his mother, shall surely be put to death. Proverbs 30 verse 17, The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Do not avenge. Proverbs 20 verse 22, Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Verse 22 also begins with an implied subject of you, as the king is once again being addressed. Although the king has great authority to execute punishment upon evildoers, he may not avenge personal evils done against him. This was a law for everyone in Israel. Leviticus 19 verse 18, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Repetition for emphasis. Proverbs 20 verse 23, Divers weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Verse 10 already laid out this very important proverb but God thought it important enough to repeat. Often in scripture a theme is repeated for emphasis to catch the reader's attention. In this case it is a reminder of the theme of deception. Man is easily deceived. Proverbs 20 verse 24, Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? In the context of chastisement and deception, man's goings refers to the way that God has laid out for man to walk. Yet man lacks spiritual discernment and cannot find the right way. Without the knowledge of God's word, man will be deceived. Isaiah 59 verse 8, The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. The snare. Proverbs 20 verse 25, It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make inquiry. A snare is a trap or a trick that employs deception, to capture something or someone. A holy thing is set apart, not to be touched without permission. A deceived man will take that which God has not given him. Adam and Eve are the prime example. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil represented the law. The law is a holy thing, Romans 7 verse 12. The law did not kill Adam and Eve. It was their disobedience to his word that plunged them into death. Leviticus 22 verse 10, There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing, a sojourner of the priest, or an hired servant, shall not eat of the holy thing. Authority to punish. Proverbs 20 verse 26, A wise king scattereth the wicked, and bringeth the wheel over them. As already seen in verse 8, the king's authority is once again emphasized in this Proverbs. To bring the wheel over someone means to bruise them or to chastise them. This theme will be emphasized again in the final verse of this chapter. Man cannot deceive God. Proverbs 20 verse 27, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Man is spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23. The Spirit of God fully knows the spirit of a man. Even an unsaved man's spirit will bear witness against himself to God at the great white throne judgment. Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man? save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Mercy and chattisment. Proverbs 20 verse 28 Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. A king's duty is to punish evil, but it must be based solely on God's word, and it must be executed with mercy. Truth is the opposite of deception. Psalm 25 verse 10 All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Psalm 89 verse 14 Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Outward deception. Proverbs 20 verse 29 The glory of young men is their strength, 
and the beauty of old men is the gray head. Young men should not be deceived by, nor glory in, their own physical strength. Proverbs 31 teaches that beauty is vain, therefore no one, young or old, should glory in physical strength of a man, or the beauty of a woman. Righteous judgment is to be executed according to the revealed word of God. Jeremiah 9 verses 23 to 24 Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness, in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. John 7 verse 24, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Conclusion Proverbs 20 verse 30, The blueness of a wound clean saith away evil, so do stripes the inward parts of the belly. Chapter 20 concludes with a proverb which concerns the physical chastisement of the body. The blueness of a wound is equivalent to stripes. God's earthly king was given authority to chastise the children of Israel with 40 stripes if necessary. Deuteronomy 25 verse 3. God sanctioned the physical punishment of the children of Israel in hopes of cleansing their inner man, bringing about repentance, and setting them forward on the right path. Summary. This chapter began with wine and strong drink deceiving the fool, and it ended with physical punishment, which cleanses the soul. The king of Israel had authority from God to sit as a judge and mete out punishment to the lawbreakers among the nation. He was to rule according to the counsel of the word of God and to execute judgment with mercy. Individuals in the kingdom had free will to choose which way they would walk, either with integrity or with deceit, but they could not resist the consequences of their choices. Dispensational Consideration the heart of man has not changed with the dispensational changes that have taken place throughout the scriptures. Man's heart continues to be desperately wicked, and Jesus Christ continues to be the only faithful man with a pure heart. However, God continues to offer wicked men a change of identity. Men can exchange their sin for Jesus' righteousness by faith in his word. He shed his innocent blood to pay for the sins of the entire world. Any sinner who puts their trust in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection becomes eternally identified with him. God can now look upon the sinner as his faithful son. Believers possess the righteousness of Jesus Christ by faith in him alone. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The great deception of this dispensation is the false teaching that man must keep the law in order to be made righteous. The truth is, the believers are already righteous because of what Christ has done. Galatians 3 verse 3, Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Life application. A wise person will not allow himself to be deceived by wine and strong drink both the physical and the spiritual kinds. Drunkenness is a grievous sin, which is likened to being deceived by false doctrine. The sure way to avoid deception is to be filled with the Spirit. This can only be accomplished by being filled with God's Word. Ephesians 5 verse 18 And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Colossians 3 verse 16 Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. It is a believer's duty to pray for those in governmental authority and to submit to them. Romans 13 verse 1, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. 1 Timothy 2 verses 1 to 2 I exhort therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Believers who are saved today by trusting in Jesus' work on the cross do not have to dread physical punishment from God, because Jesus already took their punishment on the cross. However, if believers break the law, the governmental authority, which God ordained to keep sin in check, has the right to mete out physical punishment upon the lawbreakers. Proverbs 21 verse 15, It is joy to the just to do judgment but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Chapter 21 emphasizes the certainty of the consequences which result from the volition of man. Proverbs, Chapter 20 Homework Concordance Search Using Blue Letter Bible, you will find the exact phrase a faithful man only three times. By considering the first time it is used in Nehemiah 7 verse 2, we learn that a faithful man is one that fears the Lord. While Proverbs 20 verse 6 and Psalms 12 verse 1 indicates the rarity of faithful men, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2 indicates that the Apostle Paul was considered by God to be a faithful steward. 
Proverbs 28 verse 20 declares that a faithful man will abound with blessings. Scatter away evil. By using blue letter Bible and searching for the phrase, put away evil, you will understand the authority given to the rulers of the nation of Israel to punish evildoers. Read and study each use. In the majority of cases, putting away evil involved the death penalty. A mouth filled with gravel. Read Lamentations chapter 3 to understand the punishment that comes upon the nation of Israel for rejecting the word of God. God gave the nation of Israel manna, the bread of life, which represented his word. Israel rejected it and instead chose the bread of deceit that the pagan gods offered as a counterfeit. Jeremiah wrote the poem Lamentations, which is about the consequences of Israel's choices. One of those consequences is a mouth filled with gravel, flattery and war. In 1 Kings chapter 22, you can read about King Ahab's prophets who flattered him with lies by telling him that his enemies would be delivered into his hand. Psalms 120 verse 7 and Micah 3 verse 5 both refer to a time when false prophets speak peace outwardly, but inwardly they intend to make war. Read, Job chapter 34 is a companion to Proverbs chapter 20. Elihu, a representative of God, is speaking to Job. Job deceived himself into thinking that he was righteous, because of his good works. Job patiently endured the chastisement of God and was restored in the end. The wheel. Historically, men have bruised or milled grains to make them usable for making bread. Isaiah wrote that bread corn is bruised by threshing, beating, running over it with a cartwheel, and with horsemen. God is speaking to Israel through Isaiah in parallelism. They understood that he spoke of chastising them. Isaiah 28 verse 28 bread corn is bruised, because he will not ever be threshing it, nor break it with the wheel of his cart nor bruise it with his horsemen. Ultimately, God's son Jesus Christ was bruised to pay for the transgressions of the nation. Isaiah 53 verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Israel's bruises, read Isaiah 1 verse 6, Jeremiah 30 verse 12 and Nahum 3 verse 19 to understand the condition of Israel at the end of the Old Testament. They are bruised because God had punished them repeatedly, but they did not respond to the chastisement as they ought to have done. Their duty was to remember God and turn back to his law but instead they continued to forget him and walk in their own ways. God gave them another opportunity to return to him when he sent his son to the nation, but instead of turning back to God, they killed Jesus. After he arose from the dead and poured out the Holy Spirit upon his few disciples, 120, the nation continued to reject him as their prophesied Messiah and King. As a result, the nation was cut off from being his peculiar people for a season, while the Gentiles were given direct access to God by faith alone, Romans 11 verse 25. God has also extended even more grace to individuals in Israel. God is allowing them to be saved along with the Gentiles during this current dispensation of grace, when he should be pouring out judgment upon them instead. Concordance search. Find the words mercy, truth, and throne as used together in the King James Bibles. There are four results that emphasize the importance of the Son of David, who is Jesus Christ, sitting upon the throne, judging in mercy and truth. Concordance search. Find the words glory and beauty used together in the King James Bible. There are seven results which contrast the views of God versus the views of the world upon those possessing these traits.